Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Elna Experience 560. In this video, I'm going to get you started on some of the basic stitches and the basic operations of the machine. Now, over here on the side, we have these two stitch charts. Uh, 00 to 49 and 50 to 99. You have a lot of stitches. Now here are basically decorative stitches um, and you can do some decorative stitching like this on this machine. And to do that you would choose these numbers by going up here and choosing numbers and it tells you up here um, what number of say 18 happens to be one of the buttonholes. There's 18 right there, square ended buttonhole. Okay, I'm gonna go back to stitch number one, which is this quick select button. Now these are wonderful to have because you can go right into zigzag by just simply pushing one button and you can make the zigzag longer or wider and shorter if you want. So if you're doing applique, this is perfect for that. And then you've got your, um, overcasting and seaming. So that's what this one looks like here. The overcasting and seaming does a seam and it overcasts your fabric. Overcasting, of course, is good for uh, any time that you want your fabric not to fray. So that's what that one's for. And then, of course, your buttonholes like this. And you have a variety of buttonholes, as is shown right here. And this is some of the buttonholes that you can do. Okay, so we're gonna put those right there. Now, so that's your direct select stitches. Uh, and you can also, of course, go into, go 06, like if you're here and you wanna go zero, it's already in zero on this one here, go up to six. Well, that's the one we just chose by doing this one here. Okay, so these are your your uh, tens column, ones column buttons. This is your stitch width and your stitch length. Now this one is a really special one. This one makes it so that every time you do a locking stitch over here, at the end of that locking stitch, it will cut your threads automatically for you so that you don't have to push this button or cut it with your scissors or use a side cutter. You can just depend on when it does that locking stitch, it will automatically cut. So I'm gonna leave that on for now because I'm gonna show you this really useful stitch right here. The zero one stitch is your straight stitch, but it includes a back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Let me get out my fabric here and I'm gonna show you that. So watch right here. Now I'm gonna slow it down so you can kind of see the action of it. So it's gonna go forward, backward, and forward. And notice I didn't have to push the back stitch button because it did it for me. So now I'm gonna stitch down to the end. And also I'm gonna tell you um, a little piece of advice here. Don't stitch off the edge of your fabric because your fabric your, is a good um, stabilizer for your thread to keep your thread from tangling. You don't want to stitch off the edge of your fabric. If you have a serger, that's a different story, but this is not a serger. So stitch about to the quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric, and at that point, stop and do your back stitch. Now for this one, this 01 stitch, you don't have to press and hold the back stitch button. You just press it one time, keep your foot on the pedal. It stitches backwards. Stitch the forward, and it's done. And because we had the memory cutter, that's what the M means, it remembers to cut, it cut the thread for us. We can just pull that right out. And see these nice little short thread tails? If this is the inside of your fabric, inside of your garment, you can just leave those, or you can trim those off as you choose. Now to get started sewing again, you can just start sewing and you don't have to pull up your bobbin thread. You can start sewing like this, and it gives you that. And when you're ready to stop, you can even push this, and it will stop. Now, it slows down like that automatically by itself. I didn't ease up on the, um, the pedal. So there's what the, it looks like in the back. And for most, the most part, I would just leave that. That would be just fine. All you would need to really trim is this one beginning thread 
and that's all you need to trim. Okay, so the 01 stitch is really useful. Now, the 02 stitch is the same thing, only it puts a locking stitch at the beginning and a locking stitch at the end. And if you want to cut it automatically, you'd have that on. If you turn this off, it will do its locking stitch, or in the case of the 01, the reverse stitch, and just stop at that point. At that point, you can just take your fabric out of there and cut it, or you can push the cutter button. And you'll notice that when you're sewing, we'll go back to zero, zero. When you're sewing, your needle stops in the down position. Now that's a nice, f useful feature if you are wanting to pivot and take a look at your stitches, you're not losing your place. You can push the needle up and then take your fabric out and cut it. But if you're already sewing and your needle down, you can also cut your threads and it lifts up the needle at the same time. Useful feature that way. Okay. Now some of the other useful stitches here, this is the triple stretch stitch. This is what the triple stretch stitch looks like. It's a nice, strong stitch. This is nice, strong denim type fabric. So if you're using uh, this to sew a bag or sew the back crotch seam on some pants, this is gonna give you some stretch on the bias. See, woven fabric is pretty stable on the length and crosswise grain, but on the bias, it stretches. So here is a straight stitch, just your regular old zero, zero straight stitch. And I stretched this on the bias and you can see how that thread has broken there. It's not gonna be quite as strong as your triple stretch stitch. Also, this makes a nice bold top stitch if you wanna really show off your stitches. This is great for that. That is your zero four stitch. The zero five stitch is sort of like a bent zigzag and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay. And notice up here, when I'm choosing the stitches, it's calling for the A um, foot right now. Uh, if I use uh, this one here, it also call for the, the zigzag, it also call for the A foot. But some of these, like the buttonhole foot, that's an R foot and it'll say up there what uh, foot to use. So this is good information to have. This little guy up here just means that you, we have the foot control connected. If we had this disconnected, that would not be lit and then you would use the start stop button for your go button and for stopping also. So I'm gonna go back to the O5 stitch and the way I can do that is just cycle that down like that. Okay, so the 05 stitch, I'm gonna slow this right down. I want you to watch what it does. It starts out with a little bit of a locking stitch and what it's doing is like a narrow zigzag, a narrow bent zigzag. And that's good, really good for knits because it doesn't put a lot of thread into your fabric like this does, but it gives a nice stretch to your stitch. I'm gonna just stop on that. See, a little bent zigzag. And it actually functions as a straight stitch. I mean, it's narrow enough that you can, uh, on a knit, you can press your seam allowances open. Okay, now over here, if you look carefully, you see one of the zigzags has an M, just like your direct select button. One of them has an R. The difference between those is the M, when you widen and narrow that, it widens and narrows from the middle outward. So it's gonna widen on both sides or narrow on both sides. The R means it stays the same on the right, and when you change, the width, it changes to the left, but remains constant on the right. So that's what the M and the R mean. Okay, so that's some of your basic stitches. Um, and uh, I'll give you an example. I already showed you this. Okay, so this is, if you were gonna do applique, now notice it says the A foot, but for a putting a lot of thread in my fabric like that, I would use the F foot. The F foot would also be for if I'm doing one of these decorative stitches, that uh, satin stitches like that, say like I'm doing 74. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a quick way to get into seven. Instead of going up 
you can go back. So here's nine, eight, seven. See, a few less button pushes. And then I'll go up to four, like that. Now this is calling for the F foot, and that's what we have on here. Because it's putting a lot of thread into your fabric. Okay, I don't know which one I chose, but anyway. These are all done with the F foot. And also on this sample here, if you look here, it's shiny. I've used a, um, a satiny sort of rayon type thread and that can really help your stitches stand out more, your decorative stitches if you use a satin type thread. Of course you can use variegated thread, you can use your regular sewing machine thread. It's all good for that sort of thing. Okay, um, I think that's basically it on your basic stitches. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's been helpful, give us a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, leave them in the little box down below. We also have other videos that you can watch on our YouTube channel. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.